Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. I'm Dusty. This is Jackie. This is the Big Joe Herd. As you can tell, there's something that happened here. We crushed some blackberries and got rid of a lot of woody brush. Burning for bison right here. Hope you guys are ready for it. Since we were burning today, one of the first things we had to do is go ahead and feed the bison. So I gave them some cubes for the day and rolled out a fresh bell of hay. Wanted to make sure they had plenty to eat today and were happy because we didn't need any distractions. We had some burning to do. The goal today is to knock out a couple of acres of some invasive blackberry bushes that have taken over some of this pasture. A lot of these blackberries were already here when Marissa and I got the Ponderosa. We've done the prep work. We've got the crew together. It's time to start burning, which is more ground and more grazing for the bison. That's the goal today. We'll tell you more later in this video of why we don't want blackberry bushes here. So one of the first things that we did was we found a small plot of some of these blackberries that we sprayed last summer of 23. We really wanted to see how dry the fuels were and see how the fire was gonna react with the current weather we had at the time. Even though it rained two days ago, there's still a lot of dry fuel in pasture three. Here Eli is using a backpack leaf blower. If you guys didn't know this, you don't have to always use water to put out the fire. During prescribed burning, when you're prepared, you can use a leaf blower actually to blow out and kill your fire line to make your fire breaks. During this time, because we're burning blackberries, they actually throw a lot of debris up in the sky when it gets into a hot, intense fire. With that debris flying high in the air and a little bit of breeze, we actually ran into a couple of spot fires and we had to jump on them and react before the fire got bigger and streamed across the pasture towards the bison. In these cases, you definitely have to work as a team. The more people that can help in these situations can knock these fires out a lot faster before they get too big and out of control. This specific area of the Ponderosa is about halfway between two major portions of our property, the first half and the second half. This is kind of the halfway area. This is an area next to where we burn in 2022, we burn about 70 acres. This little spot Mark and I are burning at didn't get burnt as part of the full 80. So you got about 10 acres here that hasn't been burned in a year and a half or so. Because we had a lot of fuels here, we went ahead and burned it. This area had a lot of native grasses. Oh yeah. Look how green it is out here. This is the old burn unit. Here's the new burn. Look at the natural line we've got here from the road getting beat down so much. It's a natural fire break from all the dirt and the traffic, compacted soil. Creates its own fire break right here. Got a south wind's gonna push all this through. You don't have to use water on this. Plus all that green grass helps just a little bit. <laughs> and that's an exaggeration. And you've got dirt, creek. Probably not gonna light very good. There's a lot of green in here, but I wanna get rid of the briars. See lots of briars, green briars. Deer eat it. Other than that, they're pretty rough. We're gonna light right next to this creek. Not getting any fuel in the creek. That's a pretty creek. I love it. So you've got a natural break here. Uh, this is the best tool ever. So there's my trail. 
There's some burning going on. But to the north, we've already got a line partially done. Or it's a road actually, right over here. That fence line, it's a road. So, this will slowly burn. Not a lot of stuff here, not a lot of leaf matter. I've seen worse. I'm just gonna come down here and zigzag around this creek. I'm just having fun. Get my steps in. Pretty flowing creek. This is where the bison got out a long time ago. And I'm building a new fence now. I'm just making a big loop here. Make sure it doesn't go on my neighbors. This is not a fast moving fire either. So that's about enough. And there's a couple dead spots here. Some dead grass, probably leftover raw. See, it'll burn fast. Leaf matter's not. It's too green, but it's a good thing. We'll get rid of what we can now. All right, this is it. The most exciting part of the burn, the goal, is what we're trying to reach is, is to burn these two or three acres of blackberries that have been fighting for a couple years now. It's time. But before we actually light the place up, we've got to do a bit of back burning first. Because the wind is out of the south, we've got a couple of strong drifts of wind and dealing with the stuff earlier in the day, had some spot fires. And so now we're gonna do some back burning before we actually light the big portion of these blackberries. One of the biggest challenges that kind of surprised us today that we faced was the actual patties. Yes, dried bison poop have been our problem today. They have caused more spot fires from flying debris than anything out here. Not just the native dead grass, nope, cow patties, dried up cow patties. We spent most of our day fighting the little fires that the patties have started. We're gonna set up a back burn way north, probably 50 plus yards north of the blackberries, and we're gonna burn all the north side of it. Basically where the wind is going is where we're gonna set up this back burn, and we're gonna burn back slowly from the north to the south to the massive area of these blackberries. This is just a safe way so we're not having to leave the major fire to fight the small spot fires as they run across the pasture. This is just a prep so that we don't have to do that and we're not scrambling to fight fire basically. We can watch the big burn and make sure everything is safe. After having a little meeting, making sure everybody's ready, it was time to light it up. Eli, you got it.
All right, guys, we've had a heck of a day. So much fun today. That Mark, Eli, Jerry, Kevin, Keith, the brothers, the Lynch brothers are, are hanging out with us today, helping. Keith had an ATV rig and a water system that helped us, and thank gosh he came. Yeah, Marissa, Marshall, BB, which is Jerry's wife. I mean, it's been a fun, fun day. We just lit the biggest portion of this thing, and it's still burning. I've been after these blackberries for a long time. I don't know some of you are probably like, Dusty, why are you getting rid of the blackberries? There's a lot to talk about with those blackberries. And I've mentioned them before. And, and we can talk more about the blackberries. We still have a couple blackberries, I promise. We're gonna save some, Brooks likes them. We got plenty of blackberries at the Ponderosa, but we've had such a blast. And we just lit this last, last portion and it went up. I mean, it was perfect, it's exactly what it wanted. Sun's going down, it's a beautiful view. We got a lot of burning today knocked out we had our goal goal was to burn pasture three blackberries we sprayed these i uh, sprayed them the past two summers then eli helped me on this project too and now he gets to be a part of it the fun part is not spraying at all the fun part is burning and even more fun is the results from burning that we'll see here in a couple months here at the in the spring because the green grass is going to come in and that hasn't been grazed i don't know two or three acres hasn't been grazed and probably I'm gonna say five plus years, could be 10 years because of the blackberries. That was here before we got the Ponderosa, basically. We're gonna bring back the native grass. So naturally, mother nature is great here and pretty resilient. And so we're hoping that a bunch of native grass, which should come through right here this summer for our warm season plants, which is the big four. We want big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass and then switchgrass. We don't have a lot of switchgrass here. We have some old world blue stem, which is not favorable, but we want those natives because guess who loves them? Those guys over on the hill waiting on us, the bison, the American bison, they're waiting because as soon as this fire is over, I guarantee you they'll be right here in the black because there's something about bison and fire that has coexisted with the Native Americans. Those three have coexisted for hundreds of years and there's something about it and these animals are drawn to fire that's because they know that after all this is said and done fire ash regrowth with some moisture maybe not even some moisture there's a bank of seeds sitting there waiting right and it just needs a little spark that's all it needs is just a little spark and with a little spark may june july our growing season we should start to see those results we're going to see them pretty soon if we get a rain after this it's going to be amazing so we're going to keep you informed with all this and keep you on track on the growth of this and how it's performing after a march burn man what a crew i've had today we've been out here getting in smoke and everything inhaling smoke it's good for the ponderosa it's good for the it's good for our pasture good for our rangeland it's good for our bison and most of all it's good for our soil which also is good for our watershed to our water here all that comes with burning look at that sunset all right guys